There are a ton of metrics that show pain in a database, things like deadlocks and lock weights, but there are just as many metrics that you can look at that show you efficiency. And these are things that I spot check every once in a while to see which direction my database is trending. Am I doing well? Am I holding my own? Or am I heading into a ditch? And one of my favorite metrics to look at is something called index read efficiency. The big proponent and advocate of this is Scott Hayes. I actually learned this from him five, six years ago at a performance and tuning seminar with iDug. And if you aren't familiar with Scott Hayes, he is the president of DBI Software. And his software actually will help produce this metric for you, although I'm going to show you the poor man's way of doing it with SQL. In any case, the index read efficiency basically shows us how many rows DB2 had to read to get to the one row it wants. Now notice that I said read rows as opposed to read index rows and that's because the index part is kind of implied. Was an index used even at all and if it was how effective was the index? It could be affected by things like cardinality and uniqueness. But the metric is awesome and it shows me a lot. It can show you that piece of SQL that's coming in and being a dog where it's only running one or two times in an hour, but it puts tremendous pressure on the database. And it'll even flush out those SQL that run pretty quick. But when you amplify that times a thousand times, you can see the pressure it puts on the database. So the metric is really, really useful but there's a catch. You have to be careful and put it in context. So I'll describe that as well as we move forward. Let's take a look at the metric itself and then I'll show you some results and we can take a look at what's going on in my database. As I mentioned just a second ago, index read efficiency is all about how many rows I have to scan to get to the row that I need. And if you take a look at it, and you do research on this, you are actually going to find people have a lot of different perspectives on this. Scott Hayes, the one that originally taught me this method, said basically if you are less than 10, you are doing fantastic. If you are 10 or more, that's it. you got a problem. Go investigate. Where if you look at Ember Crooks and how she throws things out through the Extivia blog that she wrote on this, she says, hey, there are a couple different avenues on whether this is great or something you need to hone in on or this is an absolute problem. Where my perspective on this is you have to take a look at the whole and you are stricter with the rules or looser with the rules based off of what type of workload you have. And if you go and pull the average result set size, this will tell you what type of workload you have. If you are able to execute the SQL that says, hey, look, I looked at everything throughout the day. And if I took a look at every SQL that came in, on average, I was always returning less than 10 rows. You truly have a fast OLTP transaction processing system. And if you are consistently under that 10, you know that when you're looking at your index read efficiency, you don't play around, right? If you are at that 10 or less, play it strict. You hold a 15 as an IREF as something you immediately go hone in on. But if you're at that mixed workload, which is you are transaction processing, but you have the occasional report SQL come in every once in a while that'll throw off your metrics, you can be a little bit more forgiving, right? You can sit there and go, yeah, I'm rolling at a 15 or a 20 or one time during the day I roll up to that 100, but most of the time on the lower end of the scale. You can sit there and say, in context, this is probably okay. But if you are rolling through and all of a sudden you find SQL that's at a thousand or higher, it doesn't matter. You are still in that mixed workload. You are not a warehouse. You go in and hone in on that. Whereas if you are a warehouse, to be honest, you can be extremely loose and almost throw this out. When I was applying this to the warehouse that I ran, I made my own ranking system here based on context. I knew how my warehouse was supposed to run. 
and I knew that I could sit there and say anything under a thousand was great after that I would start breaking up into different categories so I took a look at IREF at a warehouse in more of a context view and made my own rules of thumb whereas in the transaction processing in the mixed workload side I held a little stricter to the IREF that I traditionally learned let me show you some output from my own development database let's start at the top first I need to know my workload type. I'm right now showing that I'm a mixed workload and it was interesting looking at this throughout the day. In the morning I was closer to a 9 or a 10. In the afternoon I was closer to a 12 and this evening I'm at a 15. And I know that if I look at my average result size throughout the day and over a period of time that I'm going to hover between that 9 and 15 depending on what time of day it is and that's what makes Scott Hayes's software the DBI Brother Panther pretty cool because that software automatically is going to collect this type of information and allow you to trend it so you can see hey over the past month my workload type is changing and we need to be a little bit more careful about that the next section here is taking a look at index read efficiency at a database level. I take this one with a grain of salt. You can see here my index read efficiency as a whole is actually really, really good. And that is saying if I took a look at the database as a whole, and today I took a look at all the SQL that came through, I will tell you on average it took me three rows before I found the row that I actually wanted. But what I really like to dive into is this section down here where I am taking a look at things at the statement level. And you can see how things can get thrown off. Let's take a look at this one, for example. Well, we know this first one. Here's a really good example of something that's executing a lot. And it's usually scanning one row to get to the row it needs. That's fantastic. I'm going to go down to this one here. You can see it's pretty much through the roof and ranked as severe. But take a look at this. This executed once. It read a lot of rows and it only returned one. So something like this can throw off my overall database index read efficiency. What about something like this bottom one here that's labeled as severe? 2800 roughly is the index read efficiency. Well, it doesn't sound too bad in context to the severe one that's up here, but if you go and you look at the number of executions, this one is run 3,886 times. So it's not terribly efficient and it's running a lot. To me, this would be one that I would actually hone in on first before I go to the one oddball that seems to be throwing off the overall metrics. We don't have DBI's brother Panther available to us. So I went and took a look at how can I write the SQL using system tables and features available to me. To get the average result set size, I focused in on the mon get database area. And it's nothing more complicated than the rows return divided by the select SQL statements. I happen to throw in the case statement there to help me remember what my metrics are supposed to be for each different type. When I went to the database index read efficiency and the statement level index read efficiency, I hit two different areas. For the database level, I went to MonGet workload. And I took this SQL directly from datageek.blog, which you may know as db2commerce.com same place. This is from Ember Crooks and something that I find very useful. The statement index read efficiency, I went after the MonGet package cache statement and pulled only what I needed and threw it into a case statement that helps me break down each different type, whether it's past, possible, poor, or severe. And then if you notice at the very bottom, I have multiple order statements. These are the ones that I will use as I try to make the top 10 change around and new ones float to the top, where the 
statements that have the most rows read will be different than the statements that have the largest amount of statement execution time. So you can go in here and change what you need from the order buys down to how many rows you want to see. Just the top 10, the top 20. These are all things that you can go in and easily change. All this SQL is in something called the iref.sql which is up on my GitHub repository. Any SQL or scripts that you see me use in episodes on Discover DB2 will be up on my GitHub account. So instead of reinventing the wheel, please feel free to go out there, pull this down, manipulate it as you see fit, and try it out in your own environment.